peace everyone it's black eye priestess i've been getting a lot of um insight to do the third uh edition of casting ballots and and this one i want to talk about the importance of understanding the urim and the thummim and <laughs> i call it uma thurman but um you know aside from that is the urim and the um thummim and this actually i was given the the insight that the urim and the thummim the most ancient tool of divination used by the levites starting with aaron um which you can find in the book of uh exodus chapter 28 verses 30 as well as um the only other place it's mentioned in the bible is the book of ezra chapter 2 verses 63 so again, um, in Exodus, uh, Aaron is, is commanded to wear the Urim and the Thummim under, the, uh, under his breastplate. And, you know, after um, doing a little bit of research, I, I found that the Urim and the Thummim were worn by Aaron or, you know, the, the um, subsequent priests and priesthood, so to speak, um, Eleazar mainly, under the... The, the 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 gemstone plate that that is popular where each gemstone there's 12 gemstones on the breastplate that represent the 12 tribes of israel um and you know i'll i'll, I'll probably go into depth a little bit about all of that and which colors represent which tribe so to speak but at this time it's important to understand that the Urim and the thummim were worn under that breastplate and the uh significance is wearing the 12 tribes of israel over your heart and having the best interest of israel the 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 only nation that the most high established a covenant with the most high's chosen people through the seed of abraham and abraham's covenant um so the importance of having the interest the best interest of the nation of israel on your heart as you enter into the temple, the tabernacle, to um, receive the, the divination of judgment from the Most High and, and the rituals needed with the incense, water, things like that. So, you know, um, wearing it under that breastplate, it, it shows that form of, of uh, divination and that, that close relationship required, one with the Most High, with the nation of Israel, and being under the Levites. Now, what I need to explain now is how the Urim and the Thummim relate to Vodun. Again, I was given the insight that the Urim and the Thummim are circular in shape. And there's three of them. The Urim is, represents the moon, so to speak. It is the white ball. We'll say, we'll call them balls or circles. The Thummim is actually a pair which is black and red the thummim are you know let's so to say a black circle and a red circle which actually represent the black sun and the red sun the black sun and the red sun deal with papa legba or eshu elegbara the moon yemaya or you know or the mother of, of course deals with like i said yemaya and vodun you know, the sacred feminine. So the Urim and the Thummim are a form of divination where you take the, the, the white circle, so to speak, or the moon must glow. That, that stone, that particular stone must glow after the Thummim is pulled. So if you, so to speak, something that witches do or are taught to do, I was taught by Silver Raven Wolf that um before you do any ritual any craft um you know any any spell work or root work you reach into a bag where you have the thummim and you you um pull out uh what what you pull out one of them they should be identical in shape and size and weight and you pull out one to see whether it's black or red and then if the urim the moonstone so to speak glows then you know that whatever one you pull black or red essentially red being 
representing the red sun, black representing the black sun. Um, it, it's tricky to determine. Um, red would be more caution. Black would be more, um, so to speak, uh, I would say favorable, so to speak, a little bit. Um, but I don't want to make that determination. I want you all to understand how it's used in, in the craft and in the history of divination. Pulling out the Thummim, determining which one it is, but then seeing if the Urim glows. And if the Urim glows after you pulled out the, the Thummim, whichever Thummim gives the divination, then you know that that is a message from the Most High. Without the glow of that moonstone or the Urim, it is not a divination from the Most High and it's not to be to be honored. That judgment is not to be followed through with and then, you know, through the by the priesthood to the tribes. So I, I, th this is something that I, it's taken me a while to 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 talk about. But this is a deep mystery and it, it's one of the ways for people who are doing divination, especially, you know, a lot of you sisters, you don't really see too many men doing tarot readings and doing divination. You got a lot of Babas initiating people, you know, and, and, and really maintaining a, 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 an unhealthy patriarchal standard in, in Vodun, which is a, an oral tradition of, of ancient Africa, the Dogon uh, of our forefathers. However, um, to sisters, understand that um, if you really want to be of service using a gift that you have and not, and not just following a trend because you, you want to help people or you want to do tarot, if you really want to be of service because you have been blessed with a gift, some say cursed, some gifts are more curses than blessings, depending on how you deal with society. But if you have been blessed with the gift of uh, oracle, with the gift of um, psychic ability or ability to divine. Use tarot or use other tools, even the quarry shell divination, as practice. But when you are really giving divination, one, you should be of the bloodline of the Levites. If not, uh, uh, you should be of the bloodline of Israel, more specifically of the tribe of Levi. And you should not be using any other tools other than your um, connection to the Most High. But when you're really dealing with the priesthood and, and as bloodborne witches, we, are, we have always used the Urim and the Thummim uh, form of divination. But I want you all to understand that Eshui Legbara, whose colors are black, white, and red, Eshui Legbara, who is the only ancestor who can initiate anybody into Vodun. You can go to anyone you want, but if Eshui Legbara has not come to you in spirit, if that angel of the mysteries has not come into you, into your life and spirit, you're really not initiated into Vodun at all. Eshui Legbara is the Orem and the Thummim is the ancient form of divination. Eshui like Bara rules choice, chance, and change. So if you think of the three, the, the moon, the black sun, and the red sun, you deal with uh, choice, chance, and change. Okay, so that is kind of, you know, let's say choice would represent the black sun, chance would rep represent the red sun, uh, change will represent the white sun and as we uh, or or the moon and as we know change deals with transformation which is something that deals with yamaya and the moon and, and and those feminine mysteries of water and how the moon relates to water and transformation so that change is that is that judgment and and the the execution of that judgment which creates change again choice and chance choice i i would say maybe the blacks um Choice, more so to speak, um, would be the red sun that choosing to go along with the red sun, who is Christ on the right throne, on the right throne, Christ, the black sun, Eshu, on the left throne, the left hand path, that would be chance dealing with not the, the right hand path of, uh, of being covered with the blood of Christ and trusting in the most high, but that taking your chances with the mysteries of Vodun, which is again dealing with gambling tying into you know please check out the 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 first and the second upload about um 
casting ballots, gambling in the scriptures to, to understand how this all ties in. But I just thought it was really interesting, you know, all of the insights that I have been given, um, the things that I have been shown. I, I was shown in, in my vision, the Orem and the Thummim, and that's how they are. That's, that's what they look like. They are circles, they are balls, round stones, and um, it's a beautiful thing. And, and when I think about the Urim and the Thummim, I get this deep urge to cry. It's, it's almost like I'm longing for the Urim and the Thummim. It's like, I, I'm, it, it's, it's like I'm sad over the fact that, actually, if you read through the scriptures, that the Urim and the Thummim, that, that form of divination, just like casting ballots was done away with, where being covered with the blood of Christ was the new covenant, the new covenant. Christ coming made the new covenant being covered with the blood of Christ through belief, not through actual blood sacrifice, which was the Vodun in the Old Testament that was required to remain in a state of divination and acceptance. Sin offerings, burnt offerings, sacrifices. When Christ came, those things were done away with, including the, the ancient tools, Urim and the Thummim, that were used, put in the Ark of the Covenant, so to speak, with other artifacts, and, and, and done away with and letting Christ usher in the new kingdom and anyone who believes in Christ, accepts Christ as your Lord and Savior and is covered with the blood of Christ in that way will be saved. So I, I hope this helps. Um, let me know if you all have any questions. And, um, you know, I just look forward to getting more insights. But again, if you want to learn about the Urim and the Thummim, you know, do a little research, but look up Exodus chapter uh, 28 verses 30. And let me see if I can pull it up real quick. And Ezra chapter 2, verses 63. So here we have Exodus 28. Um, verse 30. You will put the Urim and the Thummim into the breastplate of judgment, and they must be over Aaron's heart when he comes in before Jehovah. And Aaron must carry the means for making judgments of the Israelites over his heart before Jehovah constantly. That's Exodus 28.30. And then we're going to go to Ezra chapter 2. Verses 63. The governor told them that they could not eat. Um, it says the governor or the Tirshafa, a Persian title for a governor or province. So the Tirshafa, which is in, in, in you know, in the, the proper translation. The Tirshafa told them that they could not eat from the most holy things until there was a priest who could consult the Urim and the Thummim. So, um, basically, this is dealing with, you know, in Chronicles, um, the, the exiles returning. And this was a particular group of people who they couldn't determine their bloodline they 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 were uh, separated and sect off and it actually if you read um chapter 3 starting with 55 you will see that one brother took a wife of a different nation but the, her, the name of her nation was continued on so this brother took on a wife and practiced matriarchy which is continuing the mother's name and lineage and that is why these particular people were not were, were viewed as unclean they were not viewed as israel and that is why the urim and the thummim had to had to be consulted and it was determined that they could not eat from the 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 holy food you know uh, of the ritual and everything because it was determined that they were not bloodline israelites and again, it's important to understand that because, you know, I talk a lot about um, the damage that black men have done um, by taking on foreign wives. And, 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 and to this day, it's, it's purely biblical. But to this day, black men refuse to put away their foreign wives, put away their, their, their love and their lust and their preference, their biblical preference 
for white women and um and recessive women and honor the most high by mating and and marrying and keeping the covenant by keeping israelite wives women of zion in this day and age we're talking about black men only marrying black women again i'm not saying that this is a law that must be abided by for you to be covered with the blood of christ um, I'm, t I'm referring to an incident where it shows that this brother taking on a foreign wife and letting her lineage instead of the Israelite lineage that he came from continue in his family caused him to be disqualified from the nation and the covenant and the, and the blessing established. So it's important to understand black men, um, you are responsible you your refusal to date black women or marry black women is it's going to be on your head it's not going to be on the woman's head for choosing a, another uh, mate when black men are rejecting black women you have to understand the way the most high works the man is going to be held accountable before the woman for anything and everything that is the design so sisters do your thing but you know brothers understand you're the ones held responsible for what happens to the nation so think about this. Think about um, putting your faith in the most high instead of using gambling, false idols, voting, trying to vote in a, a Democrat or vote in someone who will make it better for black people somehow. Get your head out of your ass and um, start honoring the most high. And once you honor the most high and, and want to and become saved, you will naturally desire to do things that are pleasing to the most high. And, and some of you brothers may lose your unclean lust for white women. This is not about um, breaking up married couples or anything like that. But in the Bible, there were a few incidences where the, the men had to put away their white wives, put away their foreign wives in order to maintain God's blessing. And those who didn't, their bloodline was cursed and still is to this day. All right, everyone. Peace and love.